There's a reason you'll rarely find Jennifer Aniston swimming in a movie, and it goes back to her childhood. Here's a look at the Aniston you don't see in the press. Jennifer Aniston has showbiz in her blood. Her father, late actor John Aniston, is best known for his five decades on Days of Our Lives, while her mother, Nancy Dow, was a model and TV actor. According to Aniston, she never felt that she measured up to the expectations her mother had set for her. She told The Hollywood Reporter in 2015, "...she was very critical of me. Because she was a model, she was gorgeous, stunning. I wasn't. I never was. She was also very unforgiving. She would hold grudges that I just found so petty." She similarly told the Sunday Telegraph that her mother was overly concerned with outward appearances, saying, "...she was a model, and she was all about presentation and what she looked like and what I looked like. I did not come out the model child she'd hoped for." Her parents eventually divorced, with Aniston's childhood colored by all the strife that entailed. In 1999, Dow published From Mother and Daughter to Friends, a memoir, chronicling their difficult relationship. The book deepened their rift so much that they reportedly didn't speak for years. She even told Diane Sawyer in 2004 that her mother had never met her then-husband, Brad Pitt. They reportedly managed to patch things up before Dow's death in 2016. As the daughter of two actors, it's easy to assume that Jennifer Aniston grew up in the lap of luxury. That assumption, however, is way off. She described a childhood that was far from glamorous to parade, saying, "...I grew up with absolutely no money at all. I made my allowance as a kid cleaning toilets. I'm actually pretty good at it." Before becoming one of the world's most successful actors, Jennifer Aniston had a lot of jobs outside the realm of the entertainment industry. She chronicled some of them in an interview with Collider, saying, "...I worked at an advertising agency as a receptionist. I worked two days as a bike messenger. It was really wrong to put me on a bike in New York City with taxicabs." She elaborated about her brief stint as a bike messenger during an interview on The Tonight Show, conceding she was so terrible at it that she ended up making her deliveries via taxi. To be on Fifth Avenue with traffic and all of that I was holding, and then I, I, in my, I think I might have gotten into a cab. Given her lineage, it seems almost inevitable that Jennifer Aniston would follow her parents' path and embark on a career as an actor. As she told Collider, when she saw a Broadway production of Annie when she was a kid, she began imagining that it was her up there on the stage. But as a soap star, her father had firsthand experience with the brutal rejection actors face daily and didn't want that for his daughter. Not so fast. I have something to say. You can't object at your own wedding! Says who? Her dad wanted her to go to law school instead, but she was undeterred. She recalled, "...I was hell-bent, because my dad was just begging me not to be in the industry. That was my one rebellion. I was hoping that I was going to make it, so that I could prove him wrong." Her decision to ignore her dad's advice and take a shot at stardom also led to the philosophy that continues to guide her. She told The Hollywood Reporter, "...do what keeps you happy, and don't ever let people box you in." Jennifer Aniston has been open about the difficult relationship she had with her mother. This, she told in style, led to some teenage rebellion when she adopted a look guaranteed to put her mother on edge. She said, "...I was a dumpy teenager. My mom was a model and was all about looks, so I rebelled by going goth. It took me years of peeling back the onion to finally stop using makeup as a mask and feel comfortable in my skin." Looking back, Aniston doesn't have particularly fond memories of that period in her fashion evolution. She added in a 2016 interview with People, "...high school was tragic, just not well-informed. You know, you're experimenting. It was the 80s, and I looked like a goth nightmare." During the period just before the launch of Friends, Jennifer Aniston found herself in a conundrum when she was presented with the opportunity to join the cast of one of television's most iconic shows, Saturday Night Live. That revelation came during Oprah Winfrey's joint 2011 interview with Aniston and Adam Sandler. Sandler remembered, during his time on the SNL cast, seeing Aniston enter the office for a meeting. Wow, I'm gonna be working with Aniston and then just going, she said no? She said no, Aniston. She's gonna do that, friends? What the hell is friends? <laughs> In a 2019 appearance on The Howard Stern Show, Aniston shared her reasoning for taking a pass on an established hit to roll the dice on an untested sitcom. She recalled that she lectured producer Lorne Michaels on how she felt female cast members were being given short shrift compared to their male counterparts. I was like, I think the women need to be treated better here, and I don't... <laughs> oh, like, you did? You lectured Lorne? Because it was such Lauren? a boys' club. 
Becoming a member of the Friends cast would not only change her life, but it would also make Jennifer Aniston and her co-stars among the highest paid actors in television history. But before each member of the cast earned a whopping $1 million per episode, Aniston's salary was considerably smaller, reportedly just $22,500 for an episode. When her first Friends paycheck arrived, Aniston decided to treat herself to a used Mercedes she'd had her eye on. As she recalled, she'd often pass by the car, parked in the same spot on an LA street while she drove in her clunker. Thanks to that paycheck, she was able to plunk down the $13,000 asking price and became the proud owner of a luxury vehicle, at least for a little while. And then I drove it, and then it drove it again, and it never drove again. Two drives? It was a lemon. Not only did the meteoric success of Friends make Jennifer Aniston a star, but the show also did the same for her hair. The do she sported on the show became so popular, it actually had a name, The Rachel, after her sitcom character, with countless women during the 1990s instructing their stylists to duplicate it on their own locks. As it turned out, the only woman in the world who wasn't enamored of that hairstyle was Aniston herself. As she told Allure, the cut came from Chris McMillan, who worked with her hair on Friends and continues to be her hairstylist. I love Chris, and he's the bane of my existence at the same time, because he started that damn Rachel, which was not my best look. How do I say this? I think it was the ugliest haircut I've ever seen. And that hairdo lasted about a, to a total, I think, of seven months, right. and it has, le has had legs of 15 years. Film and television aren't the only mediums in which Jennifer Aniston has displayed her talents. As it turns out, she's also appeared in three music videos over the years. The first dated from 1995 and should be familiar to anyone who's ever watched an episode of Friends. I'll Be There For You, the single by the Rembrandts that took on a whole new life when it was selected to be the sitcom's theme song. In fact, Aniston is joined by all her co-stars. At one point, Aniston is seen playing bass, while Lisa Kudrow is on guitar and Courtney Cox pounds the drums. She next appeared in the 1996 music video for Walls by Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Aniston's time on screen is brief in the video, which blends a circus theme with Hindu imagery, but she had a personal connection to the song, which was on the soundtrack of her 1996 film, She's the One. Aniston later made an appearance in the video for I Want to Be in Love, the 2001 single from singer-songwriter Melissa Etheridge. In her career as an actor, Jennifer Aniston has had to overcome her fair share of obstacles, but one thing even her most ardent fans didn't know for years was that she'd also had to struggle with dyslexia for her entire life. Aniston revealed her dyslexia in a 2015 interview with The Hollywood Reporter, explaining she didn't even realize she had it until being diagnosed in her 20s. Her diagnosis came about due to a fluke when she took an eye exam to get a new prescription for glasses. She was asked to scan a paragraph and then answer 10 questions about what she'd read. She only answered three correctly. Then they put a computer on my eyes showing where my eyes went when I read. My eyes would jump four words and go back two words. And I also had a little bit of a lazy eye, like a crossed eye, which they always have to correct in photos. Being diagnosed with dyslexia provided the missing piece of a puzzle that had flummoxed her since she was little. I thought I wasn't smart. I just couldn't retain anything. Now I had this great discovery. Like many people, Jennifer Aniston has secret quirks and phobias that she mostly keeps under wraps. In a 2015 interview with E! News, she revealed a somewhat unusual phobia, going underwater. As Aniston explained, it all goes back to a childhood incident in which she was riding a tricycle around the edge of a swimming pool and accidentally pedaled right into the pool. Although she was eventually pulled to safety, the trauma has not gone away. She clarified, So I can't go underwater, and no one will believe me. I honestly can't. Aniston's phobia doesn't typically hamper her career, but it did come into play while she filmed her 2014 film Cake, which involved scenes in which her character undergoes water therapy. One scene in particular proved extra challenging when she was supposed to grip weights and sink to the bottom of a swimming pool. Asked if she felt that she'd overcome her fear with that experience, Aniston gave a big negative. No, I never will do that again. <laughs> For most of her career, Jennifer Aniston had been the type of celebrity who closely guarded her privacy and maintained a total blackout on social media. Until October 2019, that is. That was when she officially joined Instagram. She captioned her first post, and now we're Instagram friends too. Hi, Instagram. She also set a Guinness World Record for the Instagram account to reach 1 million followers in the shortest amount of time, achieving that milestone in a mere 5 hours and 16 minutes. Since then, Aniston has maintained a regular presence on Instagram. During an appearance on Jimmy Kimmel Live, Aniston also revealed that before launching her official account, she set up a fake one to try to figure out how it all worked. 
young people, the kids, will call it a Finstagram, which is short for fake Instagram. And they mostly They can't have even it. say fake anymore. Unfortunately, she didn't reveal the handle for her fake account, or as she put it, her stalker account. When Jennifer Aniston made her long-awaited post-Friends return to television, it wasn't on a traditional network, but on the Apple TV Plus streaming service in The Morning Show. The series was loosely inspired by Matt Lauer's shocking fall from grace after numerous women accused him of sexual misconduct. Chief among the show's themes, Aniston told Variety, was shining the spotlight on inappropriate behavior in show business that was once seen as acceptable but no longer. Of the series' characters and storylines, she said, all fictional, but also kind of highlighting aspects of the archetype of a charming narcissist, of a generation of men that didn't think that was bad behavior. However, she's also weighed in on other real-life cancellations over allegations far less severe than Lauer's, something that Aniston feels should be factored into the conversation. In a 2023 interview with The Wall Street Journal, Aniston said, I'm so over cancel culture. I probably just got canceled by saying that. I just don't understand what it means. Is there no redemption? I don't know. I don't put everybody in the Harvey Weinstein basket. 